Simplifying rational expressions. The key to mastering this skill is factoring. So in each of these examples, we're going to factor as much as we can and then see what we can cancel out. So let's start with this one. We've got 5x minus 20 on top. And you might notice that 5 and 20 are both multiples of 5, which means we can factor out a 5. So if I factor out a 5, I'm left with x minus, I remember, think of what you would have to multiply this by to get a negative 20 in that spot, and it would be a 4, right? x minus 4. When you imagine distributing that back in, 5 times x will equal 5x. 5 times negative 4 equals negative 20. So that's a way to check yourself. On the bottom, we still have 20. But 5 over 20 can be simplified. We can divide each number by 5. So 5 divided by 5 is 1. 20 divided by 5 is 4. So our simplified expression is x minus 4 over 4. Now you might be looking at this and thinking, oh, but I've got 4 over 4. But you don't. You have some number minus 4 over 4. So think, for example, this could be like a 7. 7 minus 4 would give you 3 on top, and that doesn't simplify. So you can only simplify like the top and bottom like we did here when you're multiplying this by something. Okay, not when you're subtracting or adding. Okay, let's try another one. Again, we're going to begin by factoring or factoring out whatever we can. So on top, I notice that both of these numbers are multiples of 6. I factor out a 6, and I'm left with x minus 4. On the bottom, I've got to actually factor this. So thankfully, my value of a is 1, which means I'm just looking for factors of this number. I need two factors that will give me negative 28 when multiplied and give me positive 3 when added together. And those two factors are going to be a positive 7 and a negative 4. Multiplied, they equal negative 28, but if I add them together, I get my middle term, which is positive 3. So now I'm going to put my factors in. I'm going to write them as binomials. So I have an x here and an x here. And then I take these two numbers that I found, positive 7 and negative 4. And in the top, it does say something different. I, I just blazed right over that. Simplify completely and find restrictions on the variable. The last one didn't say that this last part about find restrictions on the variable. So remember that thou shalt not divide by zero. In other words, we can't divide by zero. You can't have zero in the denominator. There are two values right now that if we plug it in here or if we plug it in here will give us a zero. What number, if I plug it in right here, would make this binomial equal to zero? Think about it. What number would make that binomial equal to zero? Well, if I were to plug a negative 7 in this spot, then negative 7 plus 7 would make this whole binomial equal zero. And zero times anything, whatever this is, is zero. So if I put a negative 7 in, that's going to give me a zero in the denominator. What about the other binomial? What could I plug in this spot that would make this whole binomial equal zero? Right, a 4. So if I put a 4 in that spot, then this whole thing is going to equal 0. So these two numbers here are my two restrictions. So my restrictions are that x cannot equal negative 7, and x cannot equal 4. And now I'm going to continue simplifying. So notice that when we did the restrictions, it was after we factored 
but before we started canceling, okay? So after you factor, that's when you look for your restriction. And now we're going to cancel because any value over itself is just equal to 1. So x minus 4 over x minus 4 has a value of 1, regardless of what we put in for x. It's the same expression over itself. So then we completely simplify this to be 6 over x plus 7. And again, here are our restrictions. x cannot be negative 7 and cannot be positive 4. Let's try another one. All right, so like I said, factor, factor, factor. So I'm going to take this top one, and I'm going to write it down here, and we're going to factor it. This one's going to take just a little bit more work to factor. So I want to look at my value of a and c, right? I want to multiply them. And when I multiply a times c, I get negative 15. I'm looking for a factor pair that will equal negative 15 when multiplied, but equal positive 14 when added together. And that's going to be a negative 1 and a positive 15. These two numbers, when multiplied, will give me negative 15. But when I add them, they give me my middle term. So now I'm going to show you my nifty trick. And I have shown it to you in recordings before. But just in case you forgot, I call this method the A over method. So the A over method says that you take the value of A, which is 3, and you put it over each of the numbers that we just found. So that means we're going to do 3 over negative 1 and 3 over 15. Now, this fraction is completely simplified, so we're going to leave it alone. This fraction, though, can be simplified further. We can divide the top and bottom by 3 to get 1 over 5. This fraction and this fraction are what we're going to use to write our binomial here and our binomial here, which is going to give us our factored form. So the 3x minus Sorry, the 3 over negative 1 becomes 3x minus 1. And the 1 over 5 becomes 1x plus 5. So now we factor the top. It's 3x minus 1, x plus 5. And the reason we had to use the a over method this time is because my value of a is not 1. So when your value of a is something other than 1, you have to multiply a and c together. Look at factors of that number to get the middle term, and then use a over. In this bottom trinomial, our value of a right here is 1. So that means that we can just do what I call quick factoring. And quick factoring means that we're going to have an x here and an x here. And we're just looking for two numbers that multiply to be this number and add to be this. So two numbers that multiply to be negative 10 and add to be 3. So those two numbers would be a positive 5 and a negative 2. Now, if we had to list any restrictions, this is the point that we would do it. It doesn't ask us for, this, for that in this question, but if we had to, this is when it would happen. So we're going to continue canceling, right? Continue simplifying. We have x plus 5 over x plus 5. And when we cancel those out, because they have a value of 1, any number divided by itself is 1, we get 3x minus 1 over x minus 2. And that's our completely simplified rational expression.